Christmas is over. It's dark and it's wet outside. The tubs of chocolate are empty. Your New Year's resolution is lying in pieces and the January blues are kicking in hard. You're now looking for something to look forward to, some new hobby or skill to learn, or something worthwhile to get involved with. Well, how about taking part in the world's largest wildlife survey? The RSPB's Big Garden Birdwatch is back for its 44th year. Between Friday the 27th and Sunday the 29th of January, the RSPB are encouraging you to go out and count the birds that you can see in your garden, your local park, your school, your office, wherever you want to do it. Just spend an hour chilling out and counting the birds. The Birdwatch started back in 1979 on Blue Peter, where they got children to send in their findings of all the different birds they'd seen in their garden. Cut to 2022, where last year over 700,000 people took part and counted over 11 billion birds. And all that information is really helpful to find out what birds are doing well, what birds aren't doing as well, and how we can better look after them. Because unfortunately, we've lost over 38 million birds in the last 50 years alone. It was the data from the Birdwatch that was first to show declines in song thrushes. We've now lost over 81% of those birds. It also showed declines in green finches by 70% and a 54% decline in the house sparrow, now on the red list. Thankfully, not all our birds are declining and species such as the great tit and the goldfinch are actually increasing. So you want to help, you want to get involved, what do you have to do? Well, the good news is it's absolutely simple to get involved. All you have to do is over the course of the weekend, between the 27th and the 29th of January, just spend an hour counting the different birds you can see. You could do this from looking out your window, you could do it in your garden, or you could walk down your local park. So get comfy, get a cup of tea, get your binoculars, get your favourite bird book, or you can print off the ID guide from the RSPB's website and start counting birds. You only want to count the birds that actually land in your garden, so forget about birds that are flying overhead or don't land. You want to record all the different species you see, as well as the maximum number of each of those species that you see at one time. For example, if I was sat in my garden and I saw three robins on my lawn, and then they then flew away, later on another robin came back, I wouldn't add that robin to the previous three to make four. The most I saw at any one time is three, so my number for robins would stay at three. But what if I can't identify all the different birds I see in my garden? Well, luckily the RSPB has a fantastic tool on their website which helps you work out what bird it is you're looking at. But to get you a little bit more prepared, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the top ten most common birds seen in last year's Birdwatch and give you a few tips on how to identify those species so you're going to be a little bit more ready when it comes to doing your own bird watch. So at number one, the most recorded bird last year was the house sparrow. This is a male with a streaky brown back, a white belly, little grey cap and that black bib just underneath its beak. The female is more drab in colour, but even if you can't see these birds, listen out for them as you might be able to hear them chirping from hedgerows. In second place is the blue tit, a really nice colourful bird with a bright yellow belly, greeny blue back, a blue cap on top of its head and a characteristic black eye stripe, a bit like a bandit mask which runs through its eyes, which you can even pick out in shadowy conditions like on this little video clip just here. The third most common bird was the starling, which has dark feathers but they have a purple green iridescent sheen in the right light, a bit like spilt petrol. And they're also very sociable birds, and at this time of year they're famous for coming together in large flocks of hundreds of thousands in murmurations like this one that I recorded at RSPB Leighton Moss. At number four is the wood pigeon, our largest and most common pigeon in the UK, which you can identify through that white patch on its neck, and also on these white patches on its wings, called wing bars. And if you can see either of those white patches, then you know you're definitely looking at a wood pigeon. Up next is the blackbird, a bird you might see feeding on your lawn as it looks for earthworms. But it's only the males that are completely black. They have a colour theme a bit like the Wolverhampton Wanderers with a bright orange beak and an orange ring around their eye. Females tend to be more brown in colour and perhaps they have a little bit of streaking on their throat and chest. In sixth place is a bird I'm sure that you can all already identify, it's the nation's favourite bird, the robin. And although it's a popular choice for the cover of Christmas cards, it's a bird that you can see and hear all year round as it sings throughout the year to defend its territory. The goldfinch came in seventh place last year, a beautiful little bird with a bright red face and a golden yellow patch on the wing, a social bird that you might be able to see feeding on dried seed heads or gathering in large numbers on treetops. 
The eighth most common bird last year was the great tit, the UK's largest tit, with a green back, yellow belly, and this characteristic big, bold black line down its front. Here's a little clip of a great tit that actually nested in my garden last spring. Ain't that just lovely? The magpie came in ninth place, another very familiar bird. It's black and white, but some of its feathers can shine iridescent blue. And another key feature is its really long tail. You can see how long it is hanging down here, and it's also really easy to spot in flight. And finally, in 10th place is the chaffinch, a bird about the size of a sparrow. This is a male here, shown with a pinky red breast and a blue-grey cap. The females are more drab and dull in colour, but they both have a white wing bar and white patch on the shoulder, so look out for those. So hopefully now you're feeling a little better equipped on how to identify those more common species that you're likely to see over the Birdwatch weekend. But if you have any questions at all about getting involved with the Birdwatch, about bird identification, or you just want to let me know what birds you've seen in your garden, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. And if you want to learn more about birds, nature, wildlife, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.